friends, I'm Sarah and welcome to Grace My Space. Today, we are gonna talk about bathroom design. But I wanna focus on 20 common mistakes that you can avoid before you do a bathroom renovation or before you do a new build. guest bathroom which I remodeled last year we did a combination of hired help and DIY projects in this space and so I'll share a little bit of background on our bathroom design you can find all the blog posts with sources if you're interested in the description as well when we first moved in we kept it as it was I added a little bit of wallpaper we changed the wall color and that was that a few years later we decided to do the full remodel when we started having leaking in our shower and it was going to be necessary to take out the insert that was there anyways and so we completely removed the existing shower insert we reinstalled with a soaker tub and beautiful porcelain wall tiles that mimic marble we also did new flooring to match my personal style replaced the toilet because that was leaking too and then on the other side we kept the existing cabinetry and we repainted it and we did a little bit of construction to make it work with the modern style I was going for. The previous cabinet style had a footed style and then there was a little recess where all that dirt just loved to go and hide and so I wanted to get rid of that it felt a little bit dated to me and so I just had our contractor put a piece of flat trim in front covering that little hole which also allowed us to have the flooring butt right up to the cabinetry without having to remove it first. We replaced the previous countertops that were very dark and dated and added a full height backsplash that goes halfway up the wall and then we also replaced all the fixtures with new fixtures. For this project we hired out all of the tile work all of the plumbing, I did the electrical, we had the countertops installed by the fabricator, I did the painting on the cabinet, and so we did a really nice mixture of DIY and hired help to help make it a little bit more budget friendly. Now that you've taken a bit of a tour of our bathroom, let's talk about 20 mistakes to avoid in your bathroom remodel. Now the first thing when you are going to design a bathroom is you need to look at the size space that you have quite obviously. You're going to have to fit everything that you need within the footprint that's existing. If you're going to knock down walls, make sure and look at the infrastructure around them. Are you going to have to move plumbing and electrical? Because if you do, that is going to skyrocket the budget for your bathroom remodel. So take the existing infrastructure into consideration before you knock out any walls, before you plan the layout of your design. The second thing that you're going to want to look at big picture is just the scale of the room. Let's say you have a room this size that can accommodate a very large vanity and you put a little teeny weeny vanity in it. It's going to look ill proportioned. So you want to make sure that you have proper scale for your furniture, for your tub, for a freestanding shower, or conversely, if you have a small bathroom and you jam pack it full. You have a huge freestanding tub, you try and add in a long walk-in shower and it butts right up to your vanity and it's all mashed together. That's not going to be a very functional bathroom. So you want to make sure that you have the overall size of your room and that you plan the, the elements that you add to it appropriately. Now when you're planning out everything that you want to put into your bathroom, make sure and give good consideration to storage. Bathrooms tend to be spots where you need a hefty amount of storage, whether it is toiletries or makeup or cleaning supplies or towels or a variety of things that people store in their bathrooms. You will need a significant amount of storage and you don't necessarily want to have to condense it all to a vanity. If you have the room to put a freestanding cabinet, that's always a great way to do storage solutions. If you have a linen closet, that's a great option as well. If you're designing from scratch, just make sure and take that into consideration. Don't be a minimalist in the bathroom. You don't wanna have such a clean slate that you have nowhere to put anything. Now, additionally, when you're thinking big picture, make sure you plan for your doorways. Whether you have recessed doors, pocket doors, or doors that swing, you're going to need to make sure that you have the measurements that are appropriate 
for that clearance. If you have a right swinging door or a left swinging door, how's that gonna impact the way that you move through your bathroom or a toilet placement or how you access your shower? If you have a shower door that swings open or shut, make sure you accommodate that clearance as well because there's nothing more annoying than trying to walk into a bathroom or walk into the shower or open a cupboard door and there's no clearance for you to really adequately use the space. Another common mistake to avoid is not considering privacy, whether it's windows or toilet placement, or if you want a big old open glass shower door, or if you want a curtain, just kind of consider the way that you use the space, consider the way that you have needs for privacy, and make those a part of your initial plan so that it's not an afterthought. One design mistake that I often see is you open the door to a bathroom and immediately you see the toilet. We don't want the toilet to greet us in our bathrooms. So if you can, if you haven't already had that placement from other builders or from a previous owner, try and design it so that the focal point when you walk in the room is not the toilet. When you're initially designing a bathroom, one thing to consider is resale value and also just designing for the future. If this is your forever home and you are gonna retire here, maybe you don't wanna to have to step up 20 inches to get into a tub. Perhaps you need to walk in shower. Or on the other hand, maybe you have young children right now and a tub is exactly what you need to bathe them. Just think a little bit in the future about what your needs are going to be long term. Because as you design a bathroom, it's not one of those spaces where you are necessarily going to want to renovate every five years to meet future needs. It's too expensive, it's too time consuming, they're difficult projects, especially doing things like replacing tubs or adding shower stalls. And so you wanna kind of consider the resale value and also consider your future needs as you're designing one of the more expensive rooms to renovate. And then the last thing that we'll talk about is placement of accessories. So when you think of accessories, we have towel bars, we have towel hooks, we have toilet paper holders, we have any kind of accessories that we need on the countertop, and you're gonna to wanna to think of the placement of those. If you have tight quarters and you put a towel bar on the wall, is it gonna interfere with opening a cabinet? Or if you have hooks, is it going to interfere with you walking through a space to be able to get to the shower stall? If you have a shower with a door that opens one way or the other, when you are in the shower and you're opening the door to grab your towel, did you put the hooks behind the door so you can't reach them without walking outside of the shower to get to it? Or is it easy to just reach your arm out, grab the towel, bring it back in? So just think of the placement of things as you're designing some of those accessories so that it's most functional for everyday use. Now a couple of things around the actual work and functionality of a bathroom. Number one, make sure that you have proper ventilation. There's many times when bathrooms are installed and there's no ventilation at all, that's gonna cause mold problems down the road. It's also gonna cause things like your cabinetry and your paint jobs just to not hold up as long because there's too much moisture in the space. And then when you think big picture about how the work is actually going to be done in a project, some people have limitless budgets and they can hire everything out. And that is wonderful. Some people have no budget and they want to DIY everything and that is wonderful. As long as you both have means to make that happen and have the quality outcome that you're looking for. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is trying to DIY highly skilled things. Can you learn how to plumb a bathroom? Yes, you can. Should you learn it from a professional? Probably. So there are just some things that it is worth putting money towards to have a professional do it, have a quality job. It will last longer in the outcome. You will probably not run into as many potential problems in the future with things like leaks or breakage of items because it wasn't installed correctly. And you just have to outweigh the pros and the cons to DIY versus hired help. If you do decide to hire help, one of the biggest mistakes I always see is people not getting enough quotes. If you are going to hire out anything for your renovations, get multiple quotes. Make sure that you get references. Interview past clients of the contractor. Make sure they're insured. There are a lot of different ways to go about protecting yourself ahead of time before you even get started with a contractor relationship. Now let's talk a little bit about design. 
One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is selecting different aspects of a bathroom design without looking at an overall coordinating style. If you don't know what kind of style you like, I have a couple of videos that will help kind of narrow down your decorating style, which I will put right up here for you. But basically what you should do is look at the big picture design and build your design from that overarching theme or style rather than saying, I like this tile, I like that curtain, I like that fixture, and none of them are necessarily coordinating and in the end your bathroom can look mismatched or unprofessional. Another design mistake I often see is too many clashing patterns with tile and countertops specifically. So we chose to do a quartz countertop with the full height backsplash that is the same material, but a lot of people end up doing a countertop and then a tile on the wall. If your countertop has a lot of pattern and your tile has a lot of pattern, they're going to compete. Or if your countertop has a lot of pattern and your floor has a lot of pattern, they're going to compete too. So if you're going to have one tile element that is very bold or has a lot of pattern behind it, then the other areas of the room should be a little bit more subdued. Get more of a solid surface countertop, a plain tile, bold backsplash, or a bold countertop, more subdued backsplash. This helps draw your eye to a specific design element that you really want to feature rather than people being like looking everywhere and feeling a bit overwhelmed in the space. So we chose to have the focal point be the countertop in the vanity area and then in the shower the focal point is the shower walls. The floor is beautiful. It has a lot of movement in it, just the way that it was designed, but it's plain and it's subdued and it doesn't compete with the other elements around it. Another design element is mixing metals. Now there are two camps on this. There is the camp that says, I will have one metal finish in my bathroom and I will never have another. Then there's the camp that says, you can mix metals all that you want. I tend to be the camp that says, more metal, more interest. But there are some design rules that go with mixing metals. Generally, you want to have a bit of a cooler tone like my polished nickel and then warm it up with some warmer tones like the brass. I will link up a blog post for you that goes into more details specifically on mixing metals. Another very common design mistake is not having proper lighting in the bathroom. The bathroom is one of the areas where you want proper lighting. It's where you get ready in the morning, you want to have good visibility, so you should have a few different ways to light the space. Traditionally, you would have ceiling lights, you can also have sconces on the wall or vanity lights, and you can also have task lighting. And so make sure that when you are planning out your electrical ahead of time, you know exactly where you want your fixtures to be so that they provide proper light for the functionality that you need. Let's talk a little bit more about tile. If you are going to tile a space, please, please, please lay out your tile before it gets installed. There are a lot of different things that you can avoid by laying it out ahead of time. Number one could be off-centered tiles. You could also be avoiding a tile job that runs into something and there's no way to finish it properly. You can also be avoiding the way that patterns line up inappropriately and just doesn't look quite right. Or if you're doing something like we've done on our tile floor, we did a herringbone pattern. So laying that out to make sure that the way that the herringbone lines up along doorways or into the vanity makes sense. And it looks more like a pathway rather than just, it was put down unintentionally. And also in our shower, we made sure that the way that the large format tiles were installed would fit the space appropriately. So you will avoid a lot of heartache by doing a dry run, laying your tile out in the space before it's installed fully. Additionally, when you're considering tile and you are looking at grout colors, I like to pick my tile grout for cleanability. So I rarely will do a white grout just because it does tend to yellow or get dingy easier than a gray. You also want to take grout into consideration because the grout color that you choose will determine whether or not your grout lines are highlighted. Perhaps it's 
white tile with black grout, it's gonna be very apparent where the grout lines are, or if it blends into the tile, white grout with white tile. And that way you are making a conscious design decision on how your grout lines are viewed big picture. The biggest mistake that I have seen people make is designing a bathroom for style over functionality. This is a bathroom, people. We need it to function. And so make sure that when you are doing the planning stages of your bathroom design, you are thinking functionality first. Once you get the functionality of a bathroom in place, the design is easy to follow after. So things like door placement, shower placement, vanity placement, does it flow? Can you go from the sink to the cabinet to get the towels adequately? Can you enter and exit your shower without any obstacles? Just think through all those things that you do, move around the space as if you're using it, and design for functionality, and then add the style later. Another really common mistake is budgeting too low. We all know that bathrooms are expensive to redesign or remodel or build, but often we get quotes, we put all of our eggs in one basket and then we run into an issue and there's no funds to fix it. So budget for what you need to buy, what you need to pay for somebody to help you with the remodel, and then add 10 to 20%. You may never need to actually use that money. That would be really rare, but it would be wonderful. On the other hand, you'll probably need to dig into it and you'll be grateful that you planned ahead of time. And last but not least, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is designing with the trends. Bathrooms and kitchens specifically, while you can add more trendy elements, you're going to want to keep a classic design, something that's timeless, something where you could maybe intersperse pops of trends that are easy to change down the road, but the main elements, things like cabinetry, showers, freestanding tubs, countertops, anything that is pricey. You're not going to want to design for a trend because it's going to be here 10, 15 years later and you are not going to want to remodel a bathroom which is very expensive to do on a frequent basis. Thanks for watching today. I hope I gave you some things to think about if you're planning your own bathroom remodel. Sometimes bathroom remodels go perfectly smooth and it's wonderful experience. Other times they are a nightmare. And so just kind of thinking about some of these common mistakes ahead of time, I hope will alleviate some of that heartache for anybody who's doing a bathroom remodel in the future. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications. We'll see you next time.